Hello YouTube, this is Rick Rawlings and today I'm going to be starting a Let's Fly Wings Over Flanders Fields campaign. So I haven't really done that before, I had somebody uh, in one of my comments on one of my videos said, hey you should do a Let's Fly Wings Over Flanders Field, and I said yeah, I should do that. So that's what we're going to give it a try. If you're not familiar with Wings Over Flanders Fields, it's a World War I flight simulator built on the uh, Combat Flight Simulator 3 from Microsoft way back in the day. They basically built it from the ground up, and today we're going to take a look at that. I'm going to take you through my workshop settings really quickly before we start, just so you can see what I'm flying with. I'm not going to go over what all of these mean. I have a uh, couple of videos on how to wings over Flanders fields. I'll put those in the description if you want to see, but I'll just leave this screen up here really quickly if anybody wants to kind of follow what we're doing. Basically the idea is it's going to be pretty realistic. Um, dead is dead unless some, you know, there's like a engine crash, like a game crash or some weird stutter hiccup, some, you know, some semi computer thing happens. Um, we'll restore the pilot, but other than that, it's going to be one life and then we're done. So we'll take a look at the other page of settings. So you can kind of see what I'm using here. We're going to advance um, time manually mostly just to try to advance the career. If you played every flight they gave you, it would literally take you like four years to get through one career. If you survived, I don't have that kind of time. So. We're going to play it a little bit more like actual pilots did, where they had big breaks uh, that were off. They had time when they weren't flying. Um, we're going to skip the flights that we're going to say are sort of um, milk run flights or flights that wash out or someone has a mechanical failure. Nothing happens. We'll pretend those get flown in the background. So we'll use the manual time advance quite a bit. All right, that's the basic setup that we're going to do. And now let's go ahead and create a pilot for this series. So in pilot dossier to enlist a new pilot. There's Anthony Foker right there. And hope we don't see too many of those too quickly. All right, so manual squad deployment. We're gonna set this up ourselves, not let the game decide for us. I've decided I'm gonna fly for the French this time. And I would usually start in early to mid-1916, sometimes even earlier with the new Recon Wars, but just in order to jump in the thick of things and, and make it exciting, we're going to start in uh, February of 1915. And because pilots generally don't join the flying service and immediately start flying, we're actually going to enroll our pilot, enlist our pilot a little bit before that. So we'll say what? January 5th, he had a good new year, now he's going to join the Flying Corps. And looking through these, Escad oops, I have to change this. Escadrille uh, 38 was actually uh, a pretty good path for us to follow as I was kind of looking at these earlier. So let's get this set up. So here we go. We're going to be joining Escadrille 38 uh, at La Noblet Ferme as a fighter pilot. So we got to have a name. Let's do uh, Jean-Louis, good French name, and his last name will be uh, Shensha. Place of birth, uh, we'll have him born in Nice, because that's nice. And for his date of birth, we'll have him in September 03 of 1898. So he'll be a fairly young pilot, and we're going to make him, uh, we'll give him a commission. So he'll be a sous lieutenant, and we'll leave him as rookie because that's what he is. Let's find a picture of a young looking guy. That's not too bad. He's got a lot of medals, more medals than we have right now, though. Let's see what we got. This guy looks pretty young. He's pretty good. That's another pretty young looking guy. Let's go, we'll go with this guy. He doesn't have any medals, pretty fresh face. He'll be a good Jean-Louis Chenchat. So here's the pilot we're gonna use, we'll enlist him. Make him active. And once you do that, now you can go ahead and join your campaign. 
So we're going to go activate his service. Get our campaign video going in as stuff loads up. All right, so here we are, starting in the Great War. Airmen, duty room, blah, 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 don't fish too far. Okay, so January 5th, 1917, this is actually our enlistment date. We're going to advance a bit before we actually do any flying. Um, but this is our, this is what the main page looks like. This is our squadron room. Um, you can see that currently there is not, we don't have a very large squadron, only six, six pilots. So let's go ahead and advance time and see what happens um, when we actually start to fly. So we're going to go a month, probably like a month and a week forward. So you can advance time manually using that select button. It will tell you all of the things that happen, or at least a brief overview of what happened. We get new plane, happens to show up in that time, which is good. I didn't want to fly the Newport 16 anyway. Uh, that's the summary. Here we go. And then on top of that, we're going to do one extra week. Oh, the newspaper will show up periodically, which will give you uh, news and uh, rumors and the story of aces that have been shot down. So check that out when you get a chance. And like I said, we'll go one week further in the future. All right. So here we are, 12th of February, 1917 is when we're going to start. So you can see this is your duty roster for the day. You can advance time uh, if you want to. You can also, let's go, close that out. You can also change the mission hour a little bit to go if you don't want to start before dawn. So right now it's 10 o'clock in the morning, so that should be fine. Um, we can take a look at our roster here. So you can scroll through the different pilots in your squadron. You can see what confirmed kills they have. Do they have any outstanding claims? How many missions have they flown? It's pretty cool. You can take a look at your plane that's been assigned to you. Newport 23 French fighter, single uh, Vickers machine gun mounted on the fuselage. No Lewis gun for us, which is nice. Can avoid that. And then you can take a look at the Intel room where you can see the map. You can find out what's going on. It's pretty quiet. February, that's about to change. You can take a look at the aces in your squadron and also in other air services. And you can take a look at the enemy squadrons to see who you're going to be up against. So we've got Yasta 9 flying the Albatross D2. They are uh, good, well-rated. Average Yasta 10, Albatross D2. Helbestrad D3, average. Okay, so that can tell you that. Uh, forces that you have are raid against you. Pretty interesting. But let's just go ahead and find out what our mission, first mission for this pilot is going to be. So we'll go to the briefing room and I'll see you there. Hmm. Guess that mission didn't go anywhere because now it's giving us the next day. There's a SPAD. Let's try again. Briefing room. Always something, I tell you. Okay, here we go. We're going to patrol the enemy front lines. So oh, that's nice. So we've got a short little um, patrol along the front lines. Just the two of us. I'm actually the flight leader, which seems unwise considering I just joined, but that's okay. And then A flight providing top cover will be these two guys. So let's take a look at our loadout. It's going to be a short mission, so I'm definitely not going to be taking 100% fuel. That does have an impact on your performance. I'm going to do like 65% fuel. That still gives us 143 miles range. Should be plenty. Um, let's go take a look at our aircraft skin. We'll just use the default. That's fine. We're not anybody yet to have a custom skin. So we're going to be taking off. Um, going to our climb point, 
traveling along the front and then returning back, probably doing a couple of back and forths. So I'm going to start the mission and then I'll see you on the field. Cold. Great. All right, so here we are on the field on a rather cold looking February day. Not a lot of clouds, but it does look pretty frigid out there. Let's go ahead and start our engine. Everybody's ready to take off. As our engine's warming up, we'll check our flight surfaces. I think it's pretty good. They're all ready to go, so eager, so eager to get up there and get killed. Let's go. Takeoff's pretty easy. Just uh, throw the throttle forward, use some rudder to keep you level, a little back pressure on the stick, and you'll just take off by yourself pretty quickly. Sometimes you do get uh, scrambled without being told that, so you definitely want to check above you when you take off. We'll do a quick circuit of the field. Even though it's an older engine, I quite look, like the overall look of it. Especially the winter tiles, very nice. Look at that, that just looks cold. Cold and crisp. See just a little bit of my, I don't know if it shows up on the compression, but my goggle effect. Got one of our observation balloons there. And I think I saw another one down here. Yeah, over there. <clears throat> and there's the home field. All right, so we're going to uh, form up and climb to altitude and then head to the front lines. Probably won't show the whole thing. I'll, I'll pick it back up there unless anything exciting happens along the way. Lean my mixture. Before I forget to do that. Go. Then I'll see you uh, once we get to the front or when something happens. All right, here we are approaching the front lines, no man's land, as they say. As cold as it is up here, I certainly would not want to be down there, hiding in trenches or occasionally have to go over the top in this weather. So we'll get out over the lines, and then we're going to head east on our flight path, look for any enemy incursions or anybody who just wants to pick a fight over the lines. Going to try to follow the ABCs of World War One air combat, which is always be climbing. I think it was uh, Dina Mayer himself who said, "Until you have climbed to your operational ceiling, you have climbed nowhere." So if you get up high, that gives you the advantage in a fight. We're gonna keep on climbing up here, and then pretty soon I will head. Start the patrol. Okay, so we've got, um, we're partway through our, our first pass of the front, and I saw down here, kind of lost them, there was a little bit of black, black Archie smoke means one of our friendly planes is down there somewhere doing a mission. It's one of the strong suits of uh, Wings Over Planners Field is you'll have planes, both friends and foes, just kind of going on and doing their own missions. We haven't seen any enemies up here yet. I do have uh, dots enabled. 
these guys are shooting at us now. They're shooting at someone else before. But I have dots enabled to kind of see planes off in the distance. Every flight simulator has its limitations. Some use the smart scaling system, which works pretty well. This one just renders um, a dots for airplanes beyond where they would sort of be rendered in and Full visible form just to help you see him a little bit. Yeah, Archie's Archie's aware of us. You'll notice off in the distance there's a horizon line that as I turn my head it kind of follows my you know the edge of my gaze, what I can see. So yeah, definitely everybody's got their, their limitations. You just have to roll with them. So using visual aid like a, a dot to help see aircraft off in the distance that a pilot should be able to see. Now some people do stuff like they'll they'll fly without dots for a while until their pilot is, has gotten a little bit better, then turn them on. That's a nice way of simulating that your, your pilot is increased in skill. In fact, I should probably do that myself. But in terms of enemy aircraft, nothing yet. We'll come back if we do find anybody. Alright, so we've done uh, one path up and down the front. Didn't see anybody. I was going to do another one, but I've got the low fuel warning. So we're going to head back. That's actually what's kind of great about this game, is sometimes you don't encounter anybody. I guarantee you there's other planes out there. They just didn't see me, and I didn't see them. And that's exactly how it's supposed to go, because that's you know how real pilots flew in the Great War. Is they'd fly these long missions without seeing anybody. They'd get distracted. They'd start thinking about lunch, and, and bam! Those three dots that were over your... 7 o'clock that you missed the last time you looked back there, come roaring down out of the heavens and turn you into Swiss cheese. Phew. So anyway, we're going to take this back, try to make it back to uh, home base without running out of fuel. And I'll probably talk to you as we're coming in for a landing. I'm actually going to land at an alternate field here and stop off and say hello to these fellows, see how things are going, and see if I can borrow a cup of petrol before we head back to Le Noblet Ferme, maybe grab a bite to eat with them. Let's see if we can come in for a smoothish landing. Jump in the trees. One thing I would tell all of my fly, flying students, if I had any flying students and was qualified to give flight instructions, is that planes take much longer to speed up and slow down than you think they're going to. Pretty poor landing there. Alright, let's take a look and see what our results are. Shoot this guy down. There we go. Borrow some fuel, have some lunch, head back to the aerodrome. But meanwhile, let's go find out what happened. Alright, 59 minutes of flying time. Just land a friendly field. Didn't see anybody, no enemy aircraft shot down, but still did our jobs. Everybody's okay. 
and that's it. Only one mission that day. Some days you'll have up to three. You can have up to three flights that I've seen before. Um, we won't generally, unless there's really heavy flying, I won't uh, do more than like one mission a day. Especially if it's a mission where you have uh, run into enemy forces and you know people get shot down. Some aces did that, but for the most part, uh, we avoid that. So here's our squadron, and I'm actually going to advance probably uh, two days just because the time period is so quiet. And that will lead us to the next mission. So I hope you enjoyed the first mission. It wasn't very exciting, but it did set up the little bit of the tenor of the game, and we got to see how the squadrons are arrayed and uh, see a little bit of how that action plays out. So hopefully you'll join me again next time for uh, the second installment of the Let's Play Wings Over Flanders Field. When the day... We